All right, here it is, the final conclusion to our three-part series of centers of mass. Uh, today I'll be teaching you my favorite method for finding the centers of mass of a uh, three-dimensional or two-dimensional rigid body. Um, in Calculus 2, we learned a method that was kind of convoluted to derive. Um, it works, but it's not really symmetrical. In other words, the way you find the center of mass for the x-axis is different than the way you find it for the y-axis. With this method, we're going to find a symmetry in the equations that's quite nice and uh, easy to remember. So, we've got some uh, amorphous shape here. Um, I've just drawn it like kind of a weird looking cube with wiggly lines just to show that it can be any shape. Um, but this shape is in Cartesian coordinates. We've got the z, the x, and the y directions. And I've, I've got a little cube cut out in the center. And I've pulled out that cube. And you'll notice that that cube uh, is a small chunk of volume in this three-dimensional object. And that small chunk of volume is going to have a, uh, a side length dy, side length dx, and a side height dz. And so we could say that this cube's volume is dz times dx times dy. Um, now remember in Calc 2 we had to make a guess for tilde. Uh, tilde is going to be x tilde, y tilde, z tilde. Um, those are going to be our best guesses um, inside of this small chunk of where the center of this chunk is. Uh, once we know the center of this chunk, then we can sum across the volume and figure out where the center of the larger uh, amorphous shape is. So let's uh, now that we know that's dv, let's make our guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that x tilde, or I'm sorry, y tilde, is uh, right down the middle. I'm also going to make the guess that x tilde is right down the middle of the x side, and that uh, z tilde is also going to be right down the middle. No surprise there, and that's where the symmetry is going to start to come from. Um, now remember, with small chunks, we're talking about infinitesimals. And so it doesn't really matter whether we measure from the left side or from the right side, because the thing's so thin that it's going to be uh, negligible when we sum it over the entire volume. So in that case, we could go ahead and say that x tilde is just x, which would be the measure of this cube uh, from the x equals zero line. And then we could say that y tilde is just y, the measure of the cube on the y-axis. And z tilde is just z, which is the measure from the origin to the uh, z component of wherever the cube is lying in this 3D space. So um, now that we know that, remember we can apply these uh, one-dimensional center of mass equations for particle systems, and we can write them as infinite sums for rigid bodies. So, um, let's start with x bar, because all the other ones are going to look exactly the same. So this is really nice. Um, x bar is equal to, here it's the finite sum of all the distances and the masses that have those distances. And now what we're going to look at is we're going to take the triple integral of... Um, the x distances, so that would be x tilde, so in other words, the center of mass of this uh, small cube, times its small chunk of mass. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and divide it by the triple integral of the mass, just because we're summing over the mass here as well. So this is kind of our, our framework. We do need to figure out what dm is, and for that we'll go to our shape. Um, now dm is going to equal density times the volume, right? Density times volume gives us mass. So let's say that we have some density that's a function of x, y, and z. And uh, we can then multiply that density by dv. So rho of x, y, and z times the volume is going to 
equal our small chunk of mass. Now with the first method we used um, in the second video, um, so that would be calculus two, because we were cutting very long strips, um, what that meant is that we could only vary the density based on the um, the axis that would be the like for example dx if you're integrating with respect to dx for these long slices then you could only have a density function with respect to x so even though we were in two dimensions we didn't know how to handle with a density function that had for example x and y and what slicing up into these uh, little cubes does for us is that allows us to integrate with a uh, multi-dimensional density function so now we can deal with that so we remember we said that dm is going to equal um, rho, which is some density function. It could be constant. It could be with respect to x and y or z. Um, and so I'm just going to write it as rho. But I'm going to leave it in the integral just in case it's a function. And dm was rho dv. And now we're dividing. Oh, whoops. x tilde is x. So we need to put x in here. So remember our guess for x tilde was that it was pretty much x. Um, and we're going to divide by just the uh, the integral of uh, the mass, which is going to be once again rho dv because dm equals rho dv. So um, now all we really need to do is um, Remember that dv is equal to dx by dy by dz. That's why we have the triple integral here. So we need to be careful about our um, our boundaries here. I'll go ahead and call it c. And all that that represents is that, you know, like if we're going from 1 to 2 uh, in the y direction, we need to denote that um, and keep our orders proper um, as far as if we're integrating with respect to x, y, or z and in what order. So as long as you get your bounds right, this will work. And the cool thing is, is that it's symmetrical. Um, so y bar is also equal to the triple integral of rho y dv divided by the triple integral of rho dv, otherwise known as the mass. And you can write the same thing for z bar. And so this is a nice uh, way of dealing uh, with center, finding centers of mass. This method can actually be used for two-dimensional objects. You would just be integrating with one less term. Um, and so, yeah, very, very useful um, and probably my favorite method. So hopefully this wraps up centers of mass really nice. And I hope it's useful to you.